Welcome to another episode of Positive Parenting with Astrology. I am your host and resident Gemini, Maria Rieger, and today we're talking about Leo kids. This is my first video on how to best parent your Leo child. Let me know what you think of the content. Uh, just drop a comment below. Let me know if there is something you'd like to know more about in regards to Leo kids. So before we get started, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for your free, regular, positive parenting with astrology content. Okay, so Leo is a dynamic energy. It is a fire sign and a fixed sign. Leo is ruled by the sun, so when the chart holder has their sun in the sign of Leo, it's very comfortable energy. So being a fire sign, it's a masculine energy sign, which means it's more of a doing, active energy. It's a very driven energy. Leo people, like the other fire signs, they like to attack life. They are enthusiastic about life and, and having all kinds of life experiences. Like the other fire signs, it is more of an ego-oriented energy. That is not necessarily a bad thing. Sometimes that means that it takes a little more of an effort to put for the Leo person to put themselves in the shoes of the other person. It does not mean that it's not possible. It's just more of an ego-oriented energy. So where you have an energy like Libra, which is an air sign, very detached, it's difficult for the chart for the Libra person to like think about their own needs and go after their own needs. They're always identifying with what the other person wants. Leo's very different from that. So the fire energy makes it, um, makes the chart holder more able to advocate for themselves, which if you watch this channel regularly, you'll know that teaching our kids to self-advocate is one of my big topics. So that's all good stuff. So Leo is in many ways a, like a, almost a personification of masculine energy. It is the expression of I will, the purest expression of the life force of the sun. Now it's a fixed energy and like the sun, you know, it's always there. So the sun, obviously, we almost like take the sun for granted, right? Because it's always there. It's a given that it's always there. So Leo kind of encapsulates that being a fixed fire energy. Leo people do tend to be kind of dominant, just like the sun, because the sun dominates our life force on Earth. Leo people tend to dominate. Again, this is not necessarily a bad thing, especially when you're talking about people self-advocating, um, going after their own needs, protecting their own needs and things like that. But when you have a Leo person around, you will know, like they assert their presence, right, on the stage of life. It is an energy of, I am here and I am present. It's an energy that likes to be noticed. Leo kids, like Leo adults, they love praise and adoration. We're gonna talk about in a little bit about how best to praise your Leo child. So you're fulfilling their needs. Um, so a Leo adult likes to have a partner who gives them praise and adoration. Again, not necessarily a bad thing, we all like that. They like to be valued. They like to be noticed and seen. And these are all things that, that humans in general want, right? Want to be noticed. We want to felt seen. We want to felt heard. So Leo very much encompasses all of that. Interestingly, when Leo kids become adolescents and then teens, they're not always super comfortable with being noticed or being set apart because part, kind of part of childhood development is when kids become adolescents and then teens, they're concerned with fitting in. They don't want to look too different. They don't want to seem too isolated from society and their peers, generally speaking, right? So remember that, that if your Leo child kind of shies away from being singled out or the praise and adoration that you like to give them, just remember that that is a normal part of kind of the adolescent experience. Now, in astrology, often we talk about evolved versus unevolved energy, and this applies to any zodiac energy. So when you're talking about evolved Leo energy, you're talking about the highest, purest, like most perfect expression of the energy. And when you think about the sun, right, the sun radiates its life-giving rays to our planet, and in its purest like, and most perfect expression of Leo energy, that's what Leo energy does. It kind of illuminates and radiates everyone and it's this life-giving force. Think about when you go outside and you feel the sun's rays on your face after about 10 or 20 minutes, your mood starts to be elevated. Your mood starts to get a boost, right? That is the most evolved expression of Leo energy. It's this life-giving, illuminating energy. 
And it feels really good. To have attention from a Leo person feels really good. So a Leo person who is not as evolved, they're not always self-aware, right? They need the praise and adoration, but it almost becomes like a quid pro quo situation. Like, I do this for you and in return, you do this for me. Or they may do nice things for other people, give them gifts and things like that with the intent of receiving back, right? And that's not a healthy dynamic. You express love and give gifts because you enjoy doing it to make other people happy, not to get something back. You don't even give gifts, really, you don't give gifts or should not give gifts just to get a thank you. Hearing the thank you is always nice. Hearing the words of appreciation are always nice, but we don't, we should not give gifts just to hear a thank you, right? So it is unevolved expression of Leo energy. It's more of a quid pro quo relationship. It's more of a, you know, I do nice things for people to get stuff back from them. And that's not a healthy dynamic in relationships. So if you see that start to take root in your child, you want to have a conversation with them about, well, we do nice things for people because it's the right thing to do while we protect our own boundaries, but we don't do nice things for people to get things in return, right? That's not what a healthy relationship looks like. And another kind of expression of unevolved Leo energy, so not fully evolved, is that they need a lot of, or may need a lot of external validation. Now, in a perfect world, if everyone were perfectly emotionally and psychologically healthy, none of us would need external validation to validate and uh, you know provide acceptance for who we are, what we like, and our worth as human beings. We are worthy because we are human beings, period, the end. Now, that's in a perfect world. The reality is that a lot of people seek external stimulation and external validation from others for their own self-worth, okay? So in an unevolved expression of Leo energy, you'll see an individual who may you know seek these things out from other people to you know, validate their own sense of self-worth. So you wanna be teaching your Leo child that they are worthy, period, the end. They are not worthy because of what they do for other people. They're not worthy because of whether or not they achieve certain things or whether they're nice to people. They are worthy individuals. They are worthy of praise and attention because they are worthy individuals. They are worthy of love because they are worthy individuals. And when you have someone who is constantly seeking this external validation from others in the form of praise, attention, uh, you know, things like that, even spending time with them, the other person who's providing all that will get burned out because it's like sucking the energy from them because the Leo person is constantly requiring attention from them. And sometimes it gets to the point where the Leo individual wants to take time and attention, your time and attention away from other things that are important to you because they need the validation. Again, we're talking about like an extreme, the extremely negative point of view of this energy, which in any Zodiac energy, you'll have an extreme negative and an extreme positive, right? You'll have people who are evolved and self-aware and people who are not evolved and not self-aware. A lot, lot of the time it's because they've suffered some childhood trauma or that's how they've been taught by the adults in their life when they were kids. Now, because of the fixed nature of Leo energy, it's an energy that tends to be a little less physically active than Aries and Sagittarian uh, energy. It's not to say that Leo people or Leo kids don't need any physical outlet for the energy they do. But in my experience, that need for physical energy and that physical outlet is a little bit diminished with Leo. I think it's because of the fixed nature of the sign. Now, Leo, like other fire signs, does have a temper. It tends to be a little more controlled than with Aries and Sagittarian people. I think probably because of the fixed nature of the sign and because Leo is, is ultimately a loving, enthusiastic sign, it really doesn't like to fight too much. You know, Aries and Sag people, it's almost like fighting sometimes is second nature to them. Physical aggression can be such a second nature to them, especially with the boys. But with Leo, you'll see that a little bit less. Again, it always depends on kind of the other energy going on uh, in, the birth, in the birth chart. But generally, generally, although Leo does have a temper, it's not as pronounced as the other fire signs. Leo kids are extremely affectionate, right? Leo is associated with the fifth house, which is the house of fun, amusements, you know, things we do for fun, and is also the house related to children. So Leo kids 
love to have a good time. They're enthusiastic about life and they love it when the parents kind of join in the fun activities with them. So a great way to bond and connect with your Leo child is just to do something fun, you know, just for the sake of it, not any, not something that has to get done or something that has some productive goal, just something fun. Again, Leo is an outgoing energy. It's also an impatient energy like the other fire signs. So you can expect your Leo child to be impatient at times. This is consistent with the energy of the sign. So Stephen Arroyo is a well-known relationship astrologer, and this is how he describes the Leo energy. It is a warming, radiating, energizing life principle that can manifest as enthusiasm, faith, encouragement, and the drive to express self. That is a wonderful description of Leo. Again, like the sun, it asserts itself, right? On the world stage, it is enthusiastic about life. It's got this like, just this energy that just wants to enjoy life, this life-giving, warming, radiating energy, right? That's generally very positive and enthusiastic. Every Leo adult and child that I know is creative or has some talent in the creative arts. And this has to do with self-expression. Leo kids love to engage in self-expression through the creative arts. Usually it's the visual arts. Also writing, acting. Steve Martin is a famous Leo. He's an actor, as you know, a comedian, and he's also um, a well-respected author. So my point is, Leo kids love to engage in self-expressive activities through the creative arts. Could be dance, could be acting. Usually it's the visual arts, drawing and painting, but you'll, but it could be writing as well. So this is definitely something that you want to encourage your Leo child to do. Now, as you mentioned earlier with the, when we were talking about the unevolved aspect of Leo energy, um, there can be with the unevolved aspect, this tendency for the Leo person to treat others almost like subjects, like bestow gifts on the subjects. Like, so you want to be careful of that, that, it, that the Leo child is not treating others as less than equal to them. And by the way, if you are a Leo adult and that kind of resonates with you, if you feel bad when you do things for people and they don't do things for you in return, um, you may want to think about if you have things to work on from your own childhood, any healing work to do from any childhood trauma you had, or maybe your parents or other adults taught you that relationships were more of a quid pro quo, you want to think about that. And I actually have a program now to help you with that. My program Thriving After Trauma is going to be live very soon and I'm signing up just a handful of people right now because I don't have that much availability. Um, but you can find information on that in the comments and we will go in that program. I will show you step by step how to heal from your childhood trauma, how to protect your own boundaries, how to have more you know healthier relationships, how to just be happier, how to not live based on the whims of other people, all issues that I've had to overcome myself. So if you have any questions about that, you can email me or comment below. Now, Leo is at its core an extroverted energy. You can have a Leo person who tests as an introvert. I've met some, it's pretty rare. It isn't like the other fire signs. It is an energy that usually has an entourage about them. They like to be around people, which is normal. It's represented by the sun, right? It wouldn't make sense if Leo was more of an isolating energy at its core. So they like to have people around them. They like to be social. So if you're an introvert parent like me, you have to remember that, that your Leo child mo most likely needs a lot more social contact than you do. And if they don't get the social contact, they're going to suffer. So you need to be aware of that. Okay, so now we're going to get into more of the specific tips. The first one is, as we mentioned earlier, Leo kids need praise and attention. The question is, what kind of praise and attention? So when you're praising your Leo child, you want to make sure that you are more often praising the effort, right? Not the end result. You want to be careful about praising looks. I'm not saying you can never tell your kid, hey, you look very nice or you're so smart, but you want to be careful about praising things like looks because looks fade and change over time. And you don't want people to, so you don't want kids to associate, or adults, to associate their self-worth with their physical appearance. And importantly, you want to teach your kids how to be internally motivated. You don't want your kids to grow up thinking, well, I'm not going to do any of this because what do I get for this? I'm not going to take any action unless I get something in return, right? That's what our society is all about now. It's people have a really hard time 
making short-term sacrifices for mid-term to longer-term gains. It's all about what can I get right now, not what can I get in a year, five years, 10 years, how will my life look, what can I get right now, right? So you want to be careful about teaching your kids about how to be internally motivated. They have to essentially create their own motivation, obviously, as they get older in an age-appropriate and developmentally appropriate way, right? But that's why you want to be praising their effort and their hard work more so than the end result. And for example, you can praise their study habits as opposed to praising the end result, the grade. Okay. Because if, if, for example, and I see this with a lot of moms, especially perfectionist moms, they'll criticize the outcome, like whatever something they're baking or cooking or creating didn't turn out perfectly. They'll criticize the outcome, but that, has the effect of possibly, you know, teaching the child that nothing is worth doing unless it comes out perfect. And, you know, that's not how life works, right? We're learning, we're constantly improving, and we're learning how to do things. And when you're teaching your kids, especially your younger kids things, it's more about the process. It's not the end result. You're teaching them how to cook, not how to make something look perfect. Yes. Perfectionism is okay. It's good to try our best and to constantly improve, but you don't want to teach them that, you know, they shouldn't bother doing anything unless it comes out perfect, right? The internal motivation serves them well later in life. Cause you know, when you're tired or you're just not motivated to do something, you are more able to like summon up the energy to get it done. Think they were talking about things that you have to do. Cause if you're only praising the outcome and the kid may think, well, why bother doing this at all? If I can't do it perfectly, or if my parents always criticizing my you know, end result, why should I even bother to do this at all? So you want to say things like, I can tell you worked very hard on this, or I really appreciate the effort you put into this. Say things like, I love the fact that you empathize with your friend, or I appreciate the fact that you apologized, or I'm glad that you talked to me about what I did that upset you because it's very important that I know this and so I can apologize and improve because parents make mistakes too. My point is when you're giving your Leo child praise, you want to make sure you are praising the process more than like fixed qualities. And you want to make sure that you are teaching them how to, you know, summon up their own internal motivation as opposed to doing something, you know, for carrots and sticks, doing something in order to get something else. Because that external motivation, as we've said, if the external motivation isn't there when they're adults, they're not going to want to do something because the mentality is going to be, well, what's in it for me? I'm not going to do this unless there's something in it for me, but what's in it for them may just be some fulfilling experience, or this may be a case of making a short-term sacrifice for a longer term gain. And that's a very good quality to have in our modern world, kind of making the short-term sacrifice for mid to long-term gains. Cause everybody, you know, is uh, it tends to be a little more short-sighted now with the advent of social media and kind of the instant gratification. What else? You want to make sure your Leo child gets plenty of outdoor time. They need to feel the sun on their face. Okay. And they also, even though they don't necessarily have the same level of physical energy needs as Aries and Sagittarius, they still have those phys physical energy needs. As you mentioned, definitely a good idea to encourage your Leo child to pursue any creative efforts. Don't force them to do it. Just introduce them to all this stuff. And you can tell them, you know, if you get resistance from them, you can tell them, we're going to try this like one class or two classes. And if you don't like it, you don't have to continue, but you want to at least introduce them to all of that. Creative arts, pottery wheel, all those things are really good. And again, parents and ch children should do those things together. We said that uh, Leo children need a lot of time with friends. Make sure your Leo child is getting plenty of uh, friend time and social time. It is not a solitary energy. It likes to feel connected to other people. Now, as a parent of a Leo child, you need to get ready for some drama. Okay. So when your Leo child has a dramatic outburst or emotional outburst, just remember that that is consistent with the energy of the sign. Don't make your Leo child feel bad for having the outburst or you know, outwardly expressing this big energy, right? You'll do better by teaching them how to handle the emotional energy that they're experiencing. And that is, as we've said a lot on this channel, you want to recognize, ask them how they're feeling. Older kids should be able to, you know, more and more articulate how they're feeling, the emotion they're feeling, and then you kind of release it. You don't want to dwell on it, but you want to, you don't want to like 
squash the emotion or suggest to your Leo child they should not feel a certain way or that they should not feel at all or that they should not be emotional at all. That is not healthy. You don't want to teach a child that they should not express emotions. The trick is always how to express the emotion in a healthy way. And kids, you know, obviously have more and more control over the emotions as they get older, especially with parents' guidance. Another thing that's always good to do with fire energy children is help them develop their empathy, help them develop this ability to put themselves in the shoes of other people. You can ask your Leo child, hey, how would you feel if this happened to you? Or how would you feel if, you know, somebody did this to you or said this to you? How would that make you feel? What would you think about that? You could say, put yourself in my shoes right now. Pretend you're me. How would you feel? And of course, one of the best ways to teach empathy to a child is to empathize with the child and comfort the child. I'm sorry this happened. I completely understand why you're upset. You totally have the right to feel that way. Is there anything I can do for you? Those are all expressions of empathy that you empathize with the child. Very important with Leo kids, you want to be teaching selflessness. Relationships are not I do for you, so you do for me. They're not quid pro quo, right? A parent's love should never be conditional on what the child does or how the child performs in school, or even if the child is nice to their siblings or their parents. The parent's love for the child is unconditional. You love the child no matter what, whatever they do, period, the end. That is what you want to be expressing to your Leo child so they learn what unconditional love is. And then when they're older, they have healthy relationships. Another thing that's good to know is you want to teach your Leo child as much as possible not to take things personally. Fire energy can be very sensitive. It is an energy that kind of has difficulty sometimes with, with perceived rejection, even if the other person involved in the interaction isn't rejecting the person, the, the Leo person can perceive that they're being rejected. It's a sensitive energy. So you want to you know, teach your Leo child that, and while you want to validate feelings and tell them you have the right to feel disappointed, you have the right to feel upset, let's think about or maybe reframe this. Maybe it's not that the other person intended to make you upset. Maybe it's this, or I understand how it's difficult for you not to take this personally, but the, what happened may not even be about you, okay? Because you don't want your child to just internalize everything, take it personally. That's just a very heavy burden to bear. For example, if another child doesn't want to do the activity the Leo child says, that's not necessarily a rejection of the Leo child. It's just expressing a personal preference. Or when the parent tells the Leo child, no, we cannot do this right now, it's not a rejection of the child. It's just some, you know, it could be something to do with what the parent is doing at that moment. They just can't drop everything, right? It's not that you don't want to spend time with the child or don't want to talk to the child. You're just having a hard time right now, but let's do that later. So with older children, you can tell them, I'm not rejecting you, or I'm not saying I don't want to do this. I just can't do this right now, or I will do this in a little bit. Okay. Saying things like that works to preserve the relationship. You don't want to like, you don't want your child to feel rejected by you. As kids get older and more sophisticated in their thinking, they can understand this. They can understand that the parent, it's not that the parent doesn't want to spend time with the child or do something that the child wants. It's just, they can't do it right now. Or the parent needs some alone time too, or needs to do or wants to do their activity right now, right? So these conversations are important to have. And a lot of adults have trouble expressing this because they did not have good communication models as kids. That was one of my uh, issues as well. I had to kind of learn about how to communicate needs, right? So that's what I have on Leo Kids today. Again, let me know in the comments if this was helpful, if you have any more questions or concerns or observations about this video or anything else you would like to know, please drop a comment below. Thank you very much and we'll be back soon.